let's consider levels of accuracy appropriate to limitations on measurement. How close is close enough? A table is missing a leg. A carpenter is going to cut a piece of wood to replace the leg. How accurate do you think he needs to be with his measurement? To the nearest inch, half inch, or sixteenth of an inch? So we'll pick the most precise measure of sixteenth of an inch because the more precise the measurement, the less of a wobble the table may have. Where do I round to? Deciding where to round a measurement depends on how the measurement will be used. As a rule, the calculation should never be carried out to a greater accuracy than the original data. So let's consider your dog who needs flea medi medicine. The amount of medicine depends on the dog's weight. The medicine is available in packages that vary by 10 dog pounds. How accurate do you think you need to be to buy the correct medicine? So I may not know my dog's exact weight, but I have to know my dog's weight to the nearest 10 pounds. For example, if my dog is 75 pounds, I could guess his weight anywhere from 65 to 75 pounds and get the right medication for him. So here's another example on where I need to round to. Let's say you go to Dairy Queen and you and five of your friends order six medium-sized ice cream cones. The cost is $23 exactly, but we need to divide that cost evenly and fairly. How much should each person pay? So of course, <clears throat> this is a division example. We'll divide $23 by six, but I don't get a decimal that terminates. I get a repeating decimal of 3.8333 repeating. We're talking about money. Money should be to the nearest hundredth of a dollar or to the nearest cent. So in this case, the real question is, what do you want to say each person owes? $3.83 or $3.84? Now normal rounding convention rules would be to round down. But in the case of this problem situation, we have to round up because we want to make sure we have enough money to pay the Dairy Queen cashier. Had I rounded down, we would have had $22.98, which would have been two cents too short. So speaking of rounding, right, what are the limitations and the accuracy of measurements? Think about the last time that you may have used a ruler. Because the precision of a ruler is limited, you measure to the nearest inch or fraction of an inch. You might have used centimeters or millimeters, or you might have measured to the nearest quarter inch or eighth inch or something like that. The most that any measurement can be off by is half of the unit used in measurement. And this has to do with rounding numbers and rounding conventions. So a student's height was measured to the nearest inch. He was told that his height is 66 inches. His height may not be exactly 66 inches. What might his actual height be? What is the smallest his height could actually be? What is the biggest his height could be? He was told that he's 66 inches tall. He might be shorter than that. He might be 65.5 inches tall because we know that would round up to 66 inches. He might be as, he might actually be taller than 66 inches. He may be up to 66.5 inches tall, but not exactly 66.5, right? Because that would round up to 67. So what we can do is we can use special notations in math and write a compound inequality to represent all of the possible measurements that the student's actual height might be. His height can range from 65.5 inches up to 66.5 inches. But do you see the difference in the two inequality symbols that I've used? He could be exactly 65.5 inches, so I use the less than or equal to. 
but he has to be strictly less than 66.5 inches tall to round correctly to 66 inches. So why is this important? A lot of problems in real life problems involve range of measures. And keeping in mind that the most any measurement can be off is half of the unit used in measurement. Let's consider a swimming pool, a rectangular swimming pool. So most rectangular pools are about twice as long on one side as they are on the other. Most have an average depth of about five and a half feet. Your family wants to purchase a pool cover for the winter. The dimensions of the pool rounded to the nearest foot are 10 feet by 20 feet. What could be the actual area of the pool cover? Well, for my family's pool, I really just care about, not the depth, but I care about the length and the width of the pool. And if the length was measured to the nearest foot at 20 feet, it could actually be 19 and a half feet up to 20.5 feet, not including 20.5 feet. Same thing for the width. The width could range from nine and a half feet up to 10 and a half feet. So now the area, right? Because we want a pool cover. We know the area of a rectangle's length times width. What is the smallest the actual area could be? Well, it could be as small as 19 and a half by nine and a half feet. So then I'll multiply that with a calculator. The smallest my area of this pool surface could be is 185.25 square feet. What about the biggest it could be? Well, it could be up to, but not including, 20.5 feet times 10.5 feet. Multiply that with a calculator. It might be as big as, or almost as big as, I should say, 215.25 square feet. So what are the range of areas of my pool, the cover? It could range from 185.25 square feet up to 215.25 square feet.